Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is gonna be slightly different in that I'm currently in Singapore. I'm serving 14 days stay at home isolation uh, quarantine notice in a hotel. And I'm gonna share with you guys everything you need to know about traveling during coronavirus, specifically traveling to Singapore. So if you're Singaporean or you have a vested interest in Singapore, whether it be business or family, this video is for you. I'm gonna tell you all about it and what to expect if you travel to Singapore in current times. I'm gonna be going over five things. Number one is briefly, I'm gonna talk about why I'm here, why I'm in Singapore. Number two, I'm gonna go over who is currently allowed into Singapore, how I got permission to come in and how other people can too. Number three, what flying during coronavirus is actually like. And number four, what happens if you enter Singapore during coronavirus, where you're gonna go and what's gonna to happen to you. And number five, I'm gonna answer all of the questions that you guys have been asking me on Instagram about who pays for the hotel that I'm currently staying in for 14 days and all the other questions that you guys have been asking me about quarantining in Singapore during coronavirus. So let's get started. Now by a ton, the most common question that I've been asked during my time here in Singapore, quarantining in the hotel, is who pays for it? Am I paying for it myself? Is the government paying for it? Who's paying for your hotel stay for 14 days, all the food and everything that's included? And guys, during this video, I'm gonna answer that question, so stay tuned. And as always, guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button, give me a subscribe, and let's go. Now, I'm making this video because, and I know it's a bit different to the topics that I usually discuss on my channel, but I've been posting um, Instagram stories during my time here in Singapore, and so many people have been interested in what's happening and how it's working and what's going on, basically. So I'm gonna make this one-off video to discuss what quarantining in Singapore is like. Now, I'm here for family reasons, and if you wanna find out the exact reason, make sure you're following me on Instagram, because in a couple of weeks, we're gonna reveal the exact reason why we're in Singapore when we get out of this hotel basically and um, my wife was born and raised in Singapore I somehow managed to get her to live in the UK with me 10 years ago and the rest is history if you guys want us to make another video when we do get out of the hotel to show you around Singapore show you our favorite spots let us know drop a comment saying that you want us to do that video and also if you want to see our favorite photo spots in Singapore we already have a video on our IGTV on our Instagram page so go check that out and check out our favorite photo spots all over Singapore now, surprise, surprise, I'm not Singaporean and I don't hold a permanent residency or anything like that here in Singapore. I have entered using a short-term visitor pass and that's something that I had to apply for in advance and I had to request approval to be able to enter using a short-term visitor pass. And because I have special circumstances and my wife is Singaporean and we're here for family reasons, I was granted permission to enter. This is an application that I had to make online. I applied through the ICA's website, the Immigration and Checkpoints Authority in Singapore, to confirm my permission to enter, which I had to show when I landed in the airport. Now, if you wanna to come to Singapore on a holiday currently, my understanding is currently that you're not gonna be allowed. You can always try your luck and go and apply, but I think you'll be disappointed. I think you're gonna get rejected. You're only currently allowed to come, uh, as far as I'm aware, into Singapore. If you're Singaporean, you hold a permanent residency, you have a work visa or something like that, and you can prove that you need to come to Singapore for work or because it's where your family are. Now, a mandatory 14-day stay-at-home notice will be served upon you upon arriving into Singapore. And depending on what country you visited from depends on where you serve your 14-day quarantine period. So because we came from the UK, we're having to serve in a dedicated hotel facility. If you arrive from other countries, New Zealand and Australia are one, you are allowed to serve your 14 days isolation at home. So the obvious question is, if you're coming in from one of the countries like the UK, where you have to quarantine in a dedicated hotel facility, who pays for that? And again, I'm gonna answer this question later in the video where I'm gonna get my phone up and I'm gonna go through all the questions that I've been asked on Instagram and answer all of them for you right here. So the next thing I wanna share with you in this video is what it's like to fly during coronavirus. And the last flight that we took prior to coming to Singapore was in March, 2020. That was before the UK went into lockdown and before it really kicked off and the stock market took a massive dive and the whole world went into a frenzy. So yeah, we flew to Singapore from London and the first thing that we had to do was obviously get to Heathrow Airport. We took a taxi, it was the most convenient and we thought safest way to get to the airport. We actually took a couple of bin bags and laid them on our seat in the taxi to avoid any contact whilst wearing masks on the plane and everywhere in Singapore is mandatory. In the UK, it's slightly different and in the airport, uh, in Heathrow Airport, which is where we flew from. Loads of people weren't wearing their masks. However, we tried to keep ours on uh, as much as possible. Now that brings us to actually boarding the plane. And this was the least busy flight that we've ever been on. There was only about 20 of us on the plane and it was about a one-to-one -one ratio between customer and flight attendant. So the service was actually really good. We didn't have to wait for anything like that. And it was a really nice flight experience. They did still serve hot meals on the plane and everything service-wise was basically as it usually is. So what is it like to fly during coronavirus? In our experience, it's pretty much the same as it always was, except there's way less people, way less waiting around. And it's actually a much nicer experience to fly during coronavirus. So what is it like to fly during coronavirus? In our experience, it was way less busy and actually a much nicer experience to fly during coronavirus. However, there obviously are restrictions and risks associated with flying during coronavirus. 
So it's a bit of a toss up and I'd say if you don't need to fly, which is obviously the government advice, if you don't need to fly, don't fly, stay put. But if you have got to fly, yeah, it's not too bad. All right, so the next part of this video is to discuss what it's actually like when you land in Singapore and what it's like entering Singapore during coronavirus. And again, landing in Singapore was pretty much the same as it always is. Getting off the plane was faster. Obviously, there was only 20 people on the flight. And when we exited the plane and walked up the ramp, they were taking our temperature, which was the only difference, but they often do that in Singapore anyway. So nothing too strange yet. Once we were off the plane and into the airport, we just headed over to immigration like we always do. And upon arriving at immigration, there are now different desks and everyone has to stand two meters apart and approach the desk. Here, everyone has to show their passport as usual. Singaporeans have to show their IC cards and foreigners like me had to show an approval letter from the Ministry of Manpower or an approval letter from the ICA uh, showing that you have permission to enter Singapore on a short-term visitors pass. So once they had checked our documents and we were verified and allowed into the country, we exited and went to go and pick up our bags. And you know how the bags usually come out on the carousel and you pick them up from there. And um, now there was a slight difference in that the Singapore government had people out there taking the bags off the carousel and placing them on the ground for you to go and pick your own up and exit the airport. And when you walk out of the airport, usually you walk out and that's it. You're in Singapore, you can go and get a taxi, you can make your own way to wherever you want to go. Or you can go and enjoy Changi Airport, which is one of the best in the world. But this time it was slightly different and I'm not sure what it's like for anyone who doesn't have to serve a dedicated stay at home notice in Singapore, but we had to do that. So for us, we exited and we were told to turn to the right. We followed a path down to a section where there was people where we had to register our name and basically wait in a queue. When we got to the end of this queue, we were told which hotel we were gonna be staying at. This isn't something that you get to choose, guys. You have no choice over this whatsoever. When you arrive, they tell you where you're staying. You then have to board a coach. The coach takes you directly to the hotel and on the coach, there are ICA people uh, that escort you to the hotel as well to make sure that you can't get off or do anything silly. So they take you to the hotel and once you get to the hotel, you start the check-in process. And the check-in process is different. It's different to how it usually is. They have a separate section of the hotel cornered off for people who have arrived and are serving their stay-at-home notice in that hotel as a dedicated stay-at-home facility. So they gave us the paperwork. We had to scan a QR code with our phone, which I believe you now have to do wherever you visit in Singapore anyway but I'm not too sure, don't quote me on that because we haven't been out yet. So back to the checking process, we checked in and we were told which room we were staying in. Now, I believe everyone at the hotel that we're staying in anyway stays in the same category of rooms. These have been blocked off for people serving their stay at home notice in this hotel and everyone receives the same treatment. Then we were escorted up to our room and told that once we passed the door and actually entered the room, that's it. Two weeks, you're not allowed out of that door, which was pretty daunting, but we went into the room and yeah, we're pretty happy with the room that we got. We're actually really lucky because the hotel that we're staying at is only five minutes from where Evie's mum lives. And so <clears throat> she's been bringing over all of Evie's favorite foods. We've been getting mango, water, watermelon, takeaway, loads of different foods brought to our hotel by Evie's mum, which we're super grateful for. And yeah, that's just a nice added bonus for us, basically. So yeah, that's where we're up to now. We're currently on day five or six of our stay at home quarantine. I can't remember. I'm starting to go crazy in here. We actually have a really nice pool view of the hotel and they do have people staying in the hotel that aren't serving their stay at home notice. And we see them swimming down in the pool and get super envious. But guys, we're not allowed out of here. Our window doesn't even open. There's no natural ventilation, only air con, which sucks a little bit, but at least we're staying in a nice nice place and we're going to be out soon and be able to see Evie's family. Just lastly though, and before we move on to the questions, we're soon gonna receive a phone call, or so we've been told, to go and be tested for coronavirus. For this, you have to leave the hotel and go to a dedicated test facility, be tested, and then come back to the hotel, I think within a couple of hours. Um, but yeah, they test you, and I think if you're tested positive, I'm not actually sure what happens to be fair, but if you're negative, which we're hoping to be, we then wait until our time is up, our 14 days are up in the hotel and we're released and we're allowed to go out, uh, you know, like normal people. <laughs> All right, guys, now for the juicy bit. Let's go through the questions on my phone that we've been asked um, on our Instagram account about our stay here in Singapore. So let's jump in and have a look. Number one then, I thought foreigners aren't allowed in Singapore or unless you are a PR. Now, I believe the majority of that statement is true. And as I said, the only reason that I was allowed in is because I have family in Singapore. I'm married to a Singaporean and we've come in uh, for medical family reasons. All right, the next question then is, may I ask, is there any regulation for how long you need to stay in Singapore? Not too sure what's been asked of here, but basically, as far as I'm aware, Evie, because she's Singaporean, is obviously allowed to stay as long as she wants. Um, and for myself, I'm usually allowed to stay up to 90 days, but when I had to apply for my special permission, um, I told them when I was gonna be entering and leaving the country, I'm currently here for about 30 days or about four weeks. Um, and yeah, that got approved. So as far as I'm aware, um, I might have been allowed to stay up to 90 days as a foreigner uh, from the UK. Maybe that's not the case, and maybe that's different during coronavirus. 
I can't say, but I'm saying for 30 days and that got approved. Olya here says, must be boring. Um, we've been doing all that we can to try and stay entertained. And um, we have a routine where we get up in the morning, we do certain things throughout the day, we work out at the end of the day. And yeah, we're trying to stay sane. So far, so good, but um, we'll see how the rest of the time goes. Here's another one. This person's shocked in the fact that we have to stay in the hotel because they're asking, so you are going to stay in the hotel for 14 days and can't go out? Correct. We can't pass the door. We are stuck in this room for 14 days, apart from when we have to go and be tested. There's no windows that we can open or anything like that. So yeah, we're stuck in the hotel for 14 days. Other people are asking, what are the rules and regulations for non-Singaporeans traveling into Singapore? And um, I'll put some timestamps down in the description of this video. If you haven't already watched that part, uh, rewind, I'll put a timestamp and go back to the part where I talked about um, the rules and regulations for non-Singaporeans coming into Singapore. Here's a funny one. Quarantining is a great time for couples for cooking and making together. What have you cooked? <laughs> we can't cook anything in here, guys. We've got a fridge. And that's about it. There's no microwave or anything like that, but we are quite lucky in that meals are brought to us three times a day. And yeah, the meals are all right. Um, but like I said, Evie's mom also lives nearby. So she's been bringing us food um, as well. So no shortage of food, but uh, we're not able to cook and uh, do things like that in here, unfortunately. As well then, whilst we're talking about food, can you order for delivery? Yes, we, we're allowed to order deliveries. We've had uh, deliveries of iced tea delivered, all sorts of things delivered to the hotel. They double glove, bring it up to our room and leave it outside. They then basically leg it down the corridor so that they're gone right, before we... That? Yeah? So some hotels don't allow deliveries. Apparently some hotels don't allow deliveries. Yeah? All right, so the hotel that we're staying in, they do allow deliveries, but maybe if you get put in another stay at home facility um, hotel, you're not gonna be able to receive deliveries. So that's just our experience. Don't take my word for it. Uh, might not be the case everywhere, apparently. Again here, can you leave the room? Can you go to the pool or gym? No, we can't. We've been working out in the room without weights. We just clear as much space as possible, get YouTube up and follow a 20 minute uh, full body workout, which is what we've been doing uh, during our time here uh, in the hotel. Is the building you are in full of people? As far as I'm aware, there are quite a few people in here. This wing of the hotel, this whole wing of the hotel, I believe has been shut off for people serving um, their quarantine uh, notice here. And the rest of the hotel I think is open to uh, the rest of the public maybe, don't quote me on that, I'm not sure. But I do see people on the balconies in the other rooms and in the pool. So I'm assuming that the rest of the hotel is back uh, open as normal, but I'm not sure. Here's another good one. What's the inspiration for taking your trip? And I wish that inspiration brought us here um, for this trip, but no, we're here for family reasons. Uh, if we weren't here for family reasons, trust me, we wouldn't have visited. We wouldn't put ourselves through this 14 days in a room, not allowed out um, for anything other than that. I really love this question here. How can I increase my Instagram followers? Guys, if you wanna know how to increase your Instagram followers, go and check out our website, www.travelo.com. I'll put a link in the description. We do have a few really helpful blog posts up there and um, with regards to strategy on Instagram and things like that. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. Go and check it out if you're interested. This is one of my favorites and something that actually brought us some joy whilst we're here, something to laugh about. This person said, heard Singaporeans are the ones paying for your hotel stay. So stop wasting food here and being a snob. I just thought that was pretty funny because firstly, this person obviously doesn't even know why we're here. She obviously doesn't know that my wife's Singaporean and her family pay tax in Singapore. And yeah, and we're not wasting food. We eat everything that the hotel bring to us. We are also ordering extra food, but no food wastage here, guys. Uh, we're filling our tummies. Do you have a job, guys? And um, this basically depends on how you define a job. We don't have a nine to five job where we take home a regular salary every month. And I know that that's a pretty safe way to live and that's a good thing. And um, it's not something that we uh, any longer do. We did used to live that lifestyle in London. We worked for a number of years to save up and be able to travel. And um, since we've been traveling, we have set up loads of different side hustles. We make money on the stock market. We make money on Instagram. And there are loads of other ways that we're currently making money. All right, guys, now for the question that everybody wants to know. We've been asked this question on our Instagram account almost 150 times. It's by far the most common question. People want to know who is paying for our time here in Singapore during the 14 days stay at home time in this hotel. So I'm going to answer this question for you guys. I'm going to pull up a screenshot on my laptop and I'm going to talk you through who's paying for it, who does have to pay and maybe who doesn't depending on where you're from and where you're traveling from. So let's have a look on the laptop and let's get into it. All right, so here we go. This is the most up-to-date information as of the 17th of June uh, from the Singapore government on who has to pay um, when entering Singapore. So this table, as you can see here, is split up into three different sections. The first one is for Singapore citizens and permanent residents. The second one is for long-term pass holders. And the third one is for short-term visitors. So if you're entering into Singapore from any of these countries right here and you're a Singaporean, 
you have to serve a 14 day stay home notice. Now this isn't at a dedicated facility, you can serve this at home. And you have to have a COVID-19 test before the end of your stay home notice. And this is chargeable and down here you can see costs 200 Singapore dollars. Now if you're traveling from any other country, not one of these listed right here, you have to serve your 14 day stay home notice at a stay home notice facility like we are, and it's not chargeable. If you're Singaporean, the government pays for this. However, you still have to pay for the test that you have to take before the end of your stay home notice period. Now, if you're a long-term pass holder, this is very similar in that if you've traveled from any of these countries here, you can serve your 14 days at home or at your residence in Singapore, and that's obviously free. You have to just pay for your test. However, if you've come from any of the other countries that aren't listed right here, you um, have to pay for your stay home notice. That is chargeable to stay in the hotel, and you also have to pay for your test. So slightly different there, the only difference being that if you're a long-term pass holder and you come from not one of these countries, you come from a different country, you have to pay um, for the hotel, whereas if you're a Singaporean citizen, you don't. And for short-term visitors like me, I'm a short-term visitor, as I said, who's entered with special prior approval, otherwise you're not allowed entry, as it says right there, then, as you can see down here in number three, short-term visitors granted special approval prior to entering Singapore are subject to the same treatment as the stay-home notice and test requirements as a long-term pass holder. So that means that I do have to enter a dedicated facility for 14 days and it is chargeable and I have to be tested towards the end of the stay and that is obviously chargeable as well. So for the actual cost then you can see down here that the COVID-19 test costs $200 and everybody pays for that. And the 14 day stay at home dedicated facility charge is $2,000. So there you have it guys. I hope that those of you who are asking about the costs associated with traveling uh, and coming to Singapore during this time um, now have some idea about, the, the, about those costs. Um, who has to pay and how much they have to pay. Um, I hope the rest of this video is really helpful for anyone um, considering coming to Singapore, whether you're a local or a tourist. I hope you now can understand whether that's a good idea or a bad idea. Uh, it might be worth holding off and coming later in the year or maybe next year. But yeah, thanks for watching guys and as always give this video a like and please subscribe and I'll see you next time.